Outlaw Lawyer. Welcome back to the Outlaw Lawyers, powered by Whitaker and Hamer Law Firm. Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer, your host, they're the managing partners of the firm, and again, practicing attorneys here in North Carolina. Our guests in studio today, uh, Cassandra Nicholas and Taylor Scruggs Smith, also attorneys at Whitaker and Hamer. We say this all the time, but if you've got a legal situation and you've got questions you need answers, well, I've got a phone number for you, 800-659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. Leave your contact information, briefly what the call's about, and an attorney with Whitaker and Hamer will be in touch. And you can always email your questions to the show. We'll answer them on future programs, questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. So we're getting back into it. A draft of the U.S. Supreme Court opinion in the landmark abortion case, Dobbs v. Jackson, Women's Health Organization. Well, it was leaked. And how long, how many pages? 98. <laughs> 98 pages. And it has sparked uh, a lot of discussion around the country. And we're talking about it today on The Outlaw Lawyer. So in this segment, I wanted to talk about kind of where does, where does this leave us, right? So we're all uh, kind of we're speculating before, but now that we have this leaked opinion in front of us, we kind of have an idea at least uh, of where the court might be might be leaning. Um, and so now we have to figure out what 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 do we do now? So what are states doing? So a lot of the states in reaction to this are creating laws and even constitutional amendments in California's case to protect the right to abortion in their states to essentially become haven states for abortion, especially states that border other states with these trigger laws where it'll immediately become illegal to have an abortion. Um, so a lot of those trigger laws create criminal penalties for women that are seeking abortions. Um, Some of them for the doctors that perform them. Yeah, so like manslaughter charges, so the other states that are reacting to this, uh, that are becoming haven states, are creating protections for those women to be protected from prosecution if they come for an out-of-state abortion. And we'll get back there. I think, I think it'll make more sense. That, so this, this opinion, if, it's, if, we, if this is what we get delivered as the, as the true final opinion of, of the court, it says that Roe v. Wade was bad law. It was always bad law. It strongly says it. It strongly says it. It says the scheme Roe produced looked like legislation uh, and looked like something that would be expected from a legislative body, which is a scathing (laughs) review of a Supreme Court opinion. And I think one thing's interesting, too, because reading this opinion, I know a lot of people thought because this is a law that mainly deals with women, um, that this would be dealt with under strict scrutiny, which is an equal protection Mm -hmm. standard. And they knocked that out relatively quickly and cited to another case where they were like, the regulation of a medical procedure that only one sex can undergo does not trigger heightened constitutional uh, scrutiny. So they're actually handling this case under a rational basis review and which is a very low standard standard for the support. And then after that, they're kind of going into, okay, for Roe, the problem was they created a right that wasn't implied in the Constitution. And they're looking at the main test of whether that was a right that was deeply rooted in our history and tradition, and therefore essential to the nation's scheme of ordered liberty in order to say that right existed. Seems like problematic (laughs) reasoning. (laughs) Just slightly. So so if you read Justice Alito's leaked opinion here, uh, it was was definitely a a scathing treatment of, of Roe v. Wade. And so the court, the reason, you know, we talked about in confirmation hearings, the reason justices or potential justices get asked about settled law, uh, stare decisis, right? Yes. All right. So the, the court has a, a, a cool Latin phrase there that just basically means, you know, settled law is settled law and it shouldn't be disrupted or overturned unless it absolutely has to be because uh, people rely on these decisions, right, for all kinds of things. You know, healthcare here, uh, but businesses, uh, the general public, we all rely on these Supreme Court decisions to be law, and uh, you know, turning them over changes a bunch of stuff for folks. And uh, and here, obviously, uh, taking away a constitutional right is a it it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't. It it's happens. uncommon. It's very rare. <laughs> um, um, but they 
Alito was very scathing in his treatment of the yeah, there's road. No, there's no confusion about and where Justice Alito <laughs> stands on the issue. We don't no. know a lot about this leak from this leaked opinion, but we know Justice Alito wrote it. Not a fan of <laughs> Roe v. Wade. clear pages <laughs> of uh, how he feels about it. And under stare decisis, he said they shouldn't have even confirmed Roe in Casey <laughs> and actually was kind of disparaging the court that hit, heard Casey in that opinion for it's not after everything, man. going <laughs> after um, Roe then and actually looking at the law. And so the Supreme Court's made made what we we view, you know, here in 2022 as, as mistakes in the past. So plus E.V. Ferguson, there's this long list of cases where uh, the Supreme Court, in our opinion now, looking back, made horrible, horrible uh, decisions that have been overturned. So it's not that law, settled law can never be overturned. Right. In fact, it should be. You know, if it's bad law, yeah. I think the argument is it should be overturned, but you should always... Starry decisis, you should always not do it, right? Unless, unless you have yeah, to. That, you, you should take it, it very willy-nilly. seriously. Is that the, the way to look at yeah. it? Yeah. Because the main, you know, uh, a lot a lot of folks in the media, you know, we've been very critical of the court over the past four or five years. The process to become a justice is very political. Uh, you know, arguably it shouldn't be, but but here we are and it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting a, a justice nominated and, and confirmed um, very political, uh, always covered uh, very intently. Um, and so everything the court does now, we kind of view in a political light, which I, I hate to, to do it that way. It, right. it, it happens, it comes up. Um, but anyway, so if the Supreme Court is going to say that, that, that women, American, Americans don't have a right, a constitutional right to abortion, then that leaves it up to the states, right? That leaves it up to the federal government or the state government to do something. So the the Supreme Court is not saying uh, abortions should be illegal. Uh, This is a big step if they they do in fact say abortions are not a constitutionally protected right, because then that leaves it open to every state to interpret, Congress to interpret. And so when we were talking about trigger laws, a lot of states have taken the step to say, hey, in this state, it'll be 100% illegal, right? And then other states, like you said, New York and California are going out of their mm-hmm. way to say, not only will it be legal for, like, I think I saw New York's governor say, not only will it be legal in New York, but anybody who needs this, come to New York. And I think that's what you see, it. ultimately, yeah. is it's just going to be more difficult for a woman who wants to get an abortion to get an abortion if this is how it all plays out. But at any, at any moment, and this is what the court, I think this is what Alito is saying, you know, we've had all these cases and every year we have to kind of decide. And, and the court is not a legislative body, right? And I think... And maybe Alito got this part right. I don't, I'm not going to say I agree with everything Alito did, but he said this is a matter, you know, that needs to be, your elected officials need to take care sure. of this. Right. And elected officials let us down a lot, which is why we have the court, right? We have, we have folks who have a lifetime appointment um, who can kind of look at this. But if it's going to be left up to elected officials, then that's the scheme that we're stuck mm-hmm. with until sure. someone acts. And it could be left up to elected officials in the states, or it could be handled by elected officials in federal Congress mm-hmm. as well, that they could actually implement something to take care of this at a national level. They haven't. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Congress could do something about this tomorrow. Congress could say, we don't care what the Supreme Court says, but abortion will be legal. You right. know? And then they could set a federal structure, and then we wouldn't we wouldn't care what the final opinion of the Supreme Court is. And I think one thing that's especially come up a lot on the media outlets is kind of just the reasoning in his argument. Um, And, you know, Alito's a wonderful justice. This is obviously a sound argument. We're not saying it's wrong or it's right. Right, right, right. But I think it has implications that maybe weren't properly considered a little bit. Um, And I say that because the way he attacks the right to privacy and how the court came up with that leaves open the avenue for those other cases that were decided under right to privacy. Oh, absolutely. Using that so, deeply rooted Right, using standard. that deeply rooted standard, I think is what's kind of frustrating a lot of people that, at home that don't understand because at the time, he goes back to like 13th century English law um, or even early 20th century um, to say how much it wasn't deeply rooted. And his analysis of the history is correct, but I think not accounting for how the right to privacy kind of evolved, evolved leaves yeah. open um, the right to contraceptives case or the right to marriage case or even um, I think a lot of people's fear right now is gay marriage case because if the right to privacy doesn't exist, that's what those cases were kind of firmly standing And that's on. why you have 
stare decisis, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how crazy is it to think there was a time when a married person couldn't get contraceptives? Yeah, that's right? pretty crazy. But there's a Supreme Court case that said, "Hey, this is nuts." But at the same, but at the same, and that's the, that speaks to societal changes too, because. When that was law, there was probably a bunch of people who just were, okay, this is what this is how it is. Makes sense, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Makes sense. Doesn't but, make any sense now. But this this right to privacy that that has been I don't want to say created or invented, but this right of privacy that has been read into the Constitution, uh, not only has it been really in play the past twenty or thirty years, I'm sure you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you're gonna see a lot more rights, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, maybe not with this court, but as the court changes. These are young justices. This court's going to be around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> young justices. Sounds like a sweet TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's kind of like the big media concern right now because it just, it leaves a lot of things open because the same analysis, because it is so sound, can be applied very easily to those other cases. Um, so a lot of people <clears> are fearing, <throat> you know, contraceptives right now, gay marriage, things like that. And I, I think rightfully so because... Alito left no room for interpretation. He was pretty clear. Yeah, the, the, he had a lot of room to explain. Yeah, <laughs> plenty. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's why we haven't heard anything because this is what he's been doing for like a hundred days. Like since oral arguments, he's just been writing maybe a page a day. Yeah, he he's even, not watching Holy Moly, man. No, he's not enjoying Holy Moly with yeah. his family. Like he even has a case. I mean, a law from every state in the 1800s saying yeah, abortion that. was Yeah, that appendix illegal. is probably the most the entertaining part of the hey, whole Alito life. keeps saying there's 26 states that have asked the Supreme Court to uh, overturn Roe v. Wade. And so 26 states would be half half the union, not half the population, but half the union. His argument is, is the, you know, the Supreme Court has asked, has asked the Supreme Court to overturn uh, Roe v. Wade. So you definitely... You definitely, I think, have a fairly evenly divided populace on the issue. Maybe. Maybe that's what that tells us. All right, so being the non-lawyer on set. Over 50 non lawyer The over 50 <laughs> non-lawyer on set. So uh, it's drafted sometime in February. It's mm-hmm. leaked in early May. We don't know how much it's changed, but the fact that it was leaked, somebody wanted that information out. As a show, the Outlaw Bar, how do you think this is going to pan out? Tough prediction. That's a real tough prediction. <laughs> yeah. I, they will. There will be an investigation. I think they will probably figure out who did it, and it will probably be a lower level employee that probably gets. Pinned. I hope it's a lower level employee. Um, I, I can't imagine a law clerk doing this. Um, and again, there's reasoning on both sides for this leak to happen, and I, I don't know. You know, I I don't know. Yeah, Supreme Court law clerks are typically. Young folks, relatively fresh out of law school, they've got very promising careers in front of very them. Promising. After, very promising. After the Supreme yeah, Court. You got, if you ever, whenever you have an issue that in the past people have been willing to literally bomb places over. Yeah. Well, a law clerk, in there's theory, people that feel strongly. You know, a definitely. law clerk is a practicing. We call it. We say a law clerk, but that's a practicing attorney. So that's someone who's done very well in law school. Uh, being a law clerk in a few s- specific law schools, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 um, pass the bar. Yeah, so you're you're a practicing attorney and you're clerking with the U.S. Supreme Court, so your future is wide open. It's brilliant. Yeah, you're wearing you're Shiny. wearing shades. Your future's so bright. You're wearing, you're wearing shades. shades. Yes. All right, so I doubt a law clerk would do it because the the risk would be if it's found out. I, I would imagine you're getting disbarred or you're at least going to be yeah, yeah suspended. So for your sure. your career's over. Right. You know, so that's you, you can't imagine they would do it. Can't imagine a Supreme Court justice would do it. I think that would almost be unthinkable. But then, yeah, but we thought this opinion was unthinkable, too. And I think that's why it's yeah. hard to even predict what happens next. And I think the only I mean, I'm already kind of interested to see dissents. I know I, there will be one because there will probably be equally yeah. scathing, equally scathing, if not more, but so. completely ineffective. Sure. They're not doing. Right. Or if somebody writes a concurring opinion where they agree in his ruling, but not in his uh, reasoning. Like, so I'm already like, I want to know more. I want to know more. I, th- I, th- I think I know we're coming up against the uh, the commercial break, but I. There's a lot. This says a lot. This tells us a lot we didn't know, mm-hmm. but it also leaves a lot of questions. Sure. Yes. I think one of the things we haven't talked about is, uh, again, we don't know who leaked this uh, Supreme Court uh, draft. We don't know why they did it. They don't know what the, we don't know what their reasoning is. I think one of the things that we can say will definitely happen, though, as a result, is there'll be a lot of uh, threats 
maybe as maybe that's not the right word, but I think threats to the Supreme Court and how it stands and how it operates. And one we've we've kind of seen Congress and, and the executive branch use before is court packing. So Congress has the ability to expand how many people actually sit on the Supreme Court. That's not set in stone at all. That's right. It actually varied during history between five justices and 10 justices. It's been sitting at nine justices since 1869, uh, but that could absolutely change. And I think the last time it was really, I guess I'm gonna use Josh's words of threatened, yeah. <laughs> but was I believe around FDR's New Deal um, when it was coming out that they might overturn all of his New Deal procedures and But if you programs. double the size of the court and add like eight new liberal justices, that would absolutely change the outcome of every case going forward. And Definitely. I, and I think this issue is important enough to enough people, um, as long as, as long as uh, let's say, I guess it would be Democrats. So if there's enough Democrats in Congress, if there's enough Democrats in power, and I would say probably there's some Republicans too that I think would be aggravated with, with what's transpiring. So if you have the support and you could nominate and confirm What's the Supreme Court, 16? What's the limit on the total? I don't remember what the limit is on the total justices that, that oh, the executive branch. I don't remember. I, that. I feel like it's 15 or 16. I don't know what it is either. But you were like you said, here's eight new or seven new or however many right. uh, liberal-minded justices. So now the conservative you know, majority of five or six is a five or six minority. But the Senate would need a vote of 60 people unless they get rid of the filibuster and then they only need 50. And I haven't looked. I know we're coming up on midterms. I don't know, you know, we're pretty evenly divided Senate right now, but something like this uh, being leaked at this time and that being thrown out there uh, might motivate some bases to get out there and vote. And I think one thing we should add too is that I know a lot of people are wondering what uh, the newly appointed Justice Jackson's opinion is on this. And I think it was kind of important to note that she's not in this case. So she's That's not right. she's, it, she's not a, a vote. She's not can't write an opinion mm -hmm. on it. She's not on the court yet. So she has this really long wait period. Um, that they're like, wow, it may be a really long wait period, but she's not on this term. Right. The Outlaw Lawyers, another one in the books. Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer, your host, the managing partners at Whitaker and Hamer Law Firm. Our special guests this week, Cassandra Nicholas and Taylor Scruggs Smith, also attorneys at Whitaker and Hamer. If you've got a legal question, give them a call, 800-659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. And you can email your questions to the show, questions at theoutlawlawyers.com. We'll see you on the radio and on YouTube next week.